Hi, I'm Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today's database tour is aimed toward faculty, but can also be of use to students in the Education Department. Today we're going to be doing a database tour of Educators Reference. In order to get to the library from the College homepage, mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or click on Student Support, scroll down to Academics, and the library is in the center of the page. Once at the library, there are a variety of access points that can be useful. Databases is where we'll be spending most of our time today, but we also have research guides, including research information for faculty. We have workshops and videos, both the ones that are archived from the past and upcoming workshops in person and via Zoom. And Ask a Librarian, where you can contact a librarian via chat. Anytime we're open, you'll talk to an SMC librarian. When we're closed, you'll talk to a librarian from a college or university in the consortium to which we belong. If they're unable to answer your question, they will leave a ticket, and when we are back in, we will email you to follow up on the ticket and make sure you got the information you needed. Further down the page, we have our upcoming events, links to our resources, our hours and contact information, and our social media links. As well, on the left-hand side, there is a link for services for faculty, this includes our reserve policy for bringing textbooks over in print to put them on reserve for your, instru for your instructional needs, to request a library orientation for your class. Um, these are for classes only, so if you are a student, please do not do this. To make recommendations for purchase. Other services that we have, including remote access, linking articles in databases, we also have a YouTube video on how to live link using LTIs to put articles um, incorporated into Canvas and integrate them fully. So there are a number of places and things that you can do on the library homepage, but today we're going to look at databases. I do not recommend searching for databases here as it searches only the description of the database. It doesn't search within the database, so it can be a little confusing there. So, for example, if your students are searching for primary resources, they can search primary here and find them. But if they're looking for Andy Warhol, they're not going to find him, but they, hope they will find databases on art. We also have databases types broken down um, by popular versus scholarly versus streaming. And we have subject guides. So, um, today I'm going to go directly into education. As you note, we have 117 databases. By narrowing it down to our topic, it cuts out about a hundred of them. This lists the databases that are specific to education and databases that are broader in scope but include significant information or resources on education. But today we're going to specifically go into Educators Reference. This is a collection of journals and periodicals um, that has full text for titles in ERIC, covers multiple levels of education from preschool to college, and specialities across the educational field. It also includes some information on administration, funding, and policy. So when you head into the Educator's Reference Guide, there are a number of ways that you could do it. You could just dive right in with a keyword search. Um, but I actually really like the subject guide search. The difference between a keyword search and a subject guide search is that the keyword search is the full text for any usage of the terms that you search with. The subject guide search uses assigned subject topics um, subject terms that are assigned to specific articles so that um, some archivist or abstractor or librarian has looked at this and assigned, using human judgment, has assigned those subject terms that are specific to that article. So it's a way to cull through and get those that are not just mentioning your topic but actually about your topic. Once you're on the subject guide, you can search um, by date, you can search specifically for academic journals, you can search for all full text documents. So I'm going to search for that, um, and my particular search is going to be looking at artificial intelligence. Now it gives you subject terms, so if you start typing and your term doesn't show up here, it will not find any information, even though there is information in the database on that topic. It just means that the topic as you present it is not an assigned subject term, so at that point you would go up to the subject heading, or I'm sorry, to the keywords and search that way instead of by subject heading. But artificial intelligence is a subject term here. It is an educational database, so anything that we get will be about education and artificial intelligence. So when I search for that subject term, it drops me into a listing. 
of all full text documents that have these assigned terms. And within that broader term, we have over 10,000 items with the subject term of artificial intelligence assigned to it. You have both subdivisions, which is the narrower um, sub-elements of that topic, and you have related subjects, which is the broader search, how artificial intelligence is related to other things. So I want to go more narrow, so I'm going to head into subdivisions, and it will tell you the topic and the number of articles that are assigned that topic. So if I want to look at education, there's only one, but if I want to look at educational aspects, there are 69. If I want to look at evaluation, there are 17. If I want to look at ethical aspects, there are 32. So you can look at various aspects of the broader topic to narrow it down more specifically to suit your particular question. So I'm going to look at educational aspects. And when I look at this, unsurprisingly, the majority of the information is in academic journals. Because of the search terms that are used, they are academic by nature. But it also includes some popular magazines and news and some background and context, some books. Within these, if you would like, within your academic journals, you can um, narrow it to a specific publication date. You can look at specific subjects within it, universities and colleges, for example, online learning, college faculty, so you can break it down that way. You can look at document type. Is this a discussion? Is it an article? Is it a report? And if you have a specific journal in mind, you can look for that as well. And finally, you can search within these 46 academic journals for a specific term. So if instead of 46, you had 460, you could absolutely search within those 460 for that particular item that you're looking for. You could also take a look at the Topic Finder. The Topic Finder is an interesting visualization tool. This shows you how the various aspects within are broken down um, within this topic. Okay. So, for example, if I'm really interested in college students, it will give me the results that meet that very specific subcategory underneath artificial intelligence. But right now I'm going to take a look at one of the articles here. This is from September of 2023, and it is in Diverse Issues in Higher Education. When I click on that article, it will tell me some information about it. It will allow me to change the way that I can read or hear this article, allow me various ways to save it, print it, and download it, allow me to cite it, again, print, download, get a permanent link to it, highlight it, and take notes. It will give me the entirety of the article. It will allow me to cite it into various formats and give me related articles to it. So it's one way to make your searching more efficient and effective. Up toward the top again, it will allow you to look at all related articles. And it will give you related subjects, the broader topic. And in this particular case, because it's looking at bias, a related topic that is not specific to artificial intelligence, but is specific to education. So that is one way that you can look through here if you have a topic in mind. You can also take a look at the publications within it if you're looking for a specific journal and you don't know if we have it or not. This is one way to look. You can go into a publication search and you can list all of the publications. And then you can limit your search by peer-reviewed or full text, because not all of these are allowed by the publisher to be full text. You can look by specific publication subject, by the format, by the target audience, by the country, and by the language. This is international. And then once you find one that you like, you can head directly into that, and anything that it has full text within, it can show you the years that it has, Keep in mind that academic journals have embargoes on them that are placed by the publisher. So most of the time, the databases are not allowed to have the most current issues of the publication available. That's why services like Deep Dive exist, because the way that they sell publications is to um, limit access to them. So if you can't find them in one database, you can always go back here to OneSearch and check there and see if we have access to them. And if you don't have any luck, you can ask us and we will assist you in the search and see whether or not we have access to that specific title. If you have any questions, let us know. 
and good luck with both your research and your teaching.